Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. The leaders in below the waistline grooming, baby, because you know, you got to keep that grass low so that tree can definitely show, baby. But we've talked about, you know, all their awesome products, right? The the premium the premium performance package that they have where we talk about that two-in-one shampoo that my man Deke loves to use. Man, it keeps that hair extra fluffy and clean, you know? I personally like the body wash. <clears throat> Always makes me feel good and smell like a manly man. But more importantly, that lawnmower 4.0, you know the one with that tactical light that turns on and off? I never leave home without it, baby. So you know when you're on the road, you got to keep the trimmers with you, baby. But as you a got whole, it in your glove compartment in your you, car. You know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, you never know. We got action? All right. Manscape. But that's how you keep it feeling good. But as we always say, man, we don't talk about anything on this show unless we have a promo code for you, baby. And that promo code is dun da 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 Moats. Use that promo code, you get you 20% off along with free shipping worldwide at manscaped.com. So stop wasting time and make sure you use that promo code. Cop the awesome products and I can trust you. You can trust me when I tell you this. Your delicate, dangly twins will be thankful for it. Okay? There's an article on NFL.com where, you know, this time of year, it's always who is the free agents that the Steelers should be looking at. Who are the free agents that the Steelers could potentially, you know, you could be mocking or, or excuse me, just thinking that, you know, it makes more sense for them to get. And we've named a couple of guys, right? We've obviously talked about the different quarterbacks that have been linked to us. Jimmy G, J, Jameis Winston. Teddy Bridge were to Mr. Trubisky, but we really haven't talked a ton about other positions or other players being, you know, rumored to us or even in the sense of, hey, this makes sense for this guy to potentially be looking to go here because right now we're still waiting to see who's not going to get franchise tagged or transition tagged, who's not re-signing with their, uh, with their teams and stuff. But this article, uh, this article on NFL.com uh, presented a, a different name for us and it was a different position than what we've been discussing and I actually am a little intrigued by it. So, Deke, if you are ready, man, you can go ahead and read off the name and what they said about him. And after that, we can react to it. Yeah. So this article is called 2022 NFL Free Agency Matchmaking. One mm -hmm. fit for each AFC team. And from what it looks like, you could correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. as I was reading through all this, they don't double the players fit like they don't put correct it's just one player, one player with one team, team and then they yeah. also put them on another team or right. two it's just which, like which I, absolutely, I actually like that as well man all right yeah once a person gets it's like the draft once a person yeah. gets picked or selected for that team mm -hmm. you can't use that player again in the article yeah. so for the Steelers they have Darius Williams cornerback from the Rams mm -hmm. Super Bowl winning what quarterback it says, from the Rams put some respect on his name man yeah, it says, let's start here. I don't buy a syllable from the parting general manager, Kevin Colbert, when he waxes poetic about shoving Mason Rudolph onto the field as an opening week starter for the Steelers. If that happens, it doesn't matter whom I float to Pittsburgh in this early March wood storm. None of the free agent quarterbacks would do much to help, though, which may be Colbert's overarching point. I'm handing the Steelers defensive assistance in the form of Williams. The former Rams cover man benefited playing across ace Jalen Ramsey, but his quickness and ball skills make him an attractive add-on for a defense waving goodbye to Joe Hayden and after letting go of Mike Hilton and Steven Nelson an offseason ago. Whew. My man I understand with... the position. Yeah. But you go ahead first. No, I was going to say my man came with that flamethrower the first two <laughs> sentences, though, man. There you go. He said, I don't believe anything that my man Kevin Cooper said. You put Mason Rudolph out there, it's over, over. Yikes, that was a little rough, a little harsh. <laughs> but no, you react to it first, man, and after that, man, I give my opinion on it as well, man. I mean, I get the position. Mm -hmm. He's not the guy I'm really looking for. Yeah. I know he had a really good 2020 season. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he fell off a little bit. I was looking for more context. He was injured throughout mm -hmm. the season. They weren't putting him in the same exact spots they were putting him in 2020 for success. He was having some tough matchups, particularly mm -hmm. against tight ends. 29. So, yeah, he's not over the hill at all, especially yeah, when we're talking about and, Stephon he, Gilmore he, yeah, at 32. He's 28 right now, but he'll be 29 when the season starts. So yeah. He'll be 29. Yeah, he'll correct, be 29 correct. when the season starts. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, I want Stephon Gilmore. I think right. they matched Stephon Gilmore to another team. I think it was mm-hmm. in the NFC. Yeah. So for this exercise, I kind of get it. He's not he's not one of the top guys I'm looking for. He's mm-hmm. what five nine, five ten mm-hmm. on the smaller side. Yep. I'd rather want a, a prototypical cornerback, especially with him coming off the down season. Mm-hmm. So mixed bag. Like if we get him on a cheap con, I don't want to be spending out the wazoo for him. Right, right. But if we got him on a cheap contract, then fine. Like, almost like uh, Trey Wayne's. Whenever we were okay. talking about the Bengals potentially cutting him, I do yeah. think he is better than Trey Wayne's, at least in recent history. But yeah, I, mixed reaction. I, I, I don't know. I'm not too gun ho about it. For sure, for sure. So for me, man, I kind of looked at it in a similar light. Obviously, we talk about Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson um, just in a way higher vein because those guys are proven number one corners. Those guys are proven that they can follow a receiver, a number one receiver, and still be productive. They generate turnovers. Um, In a sense, they're force multipliers. But we also have to be realistic in the sense that, yeah, they might price themselves out for us. Yeah. If a team wants to give Gilmore, you know, 16, 17, that might be too much for what we're trying to offer. That might be too much for where we're willing to go. JC Jackson, I think he's looking for what, close to 20, I think it is. So it's like, man, we said that he's probably going to be priced out of us as well. So if we're losing out on the two main guys that we want, but we still know we need another body, we need something that's proven, Darius is intriguing because he's only been in the league four years. He started out in Baltimore. Then from there, he went to uh, to L.A. But as soon as he got out there with the Rams, you see he was the starter. 12 games, 16 games, 16 games. Like, plays a lot. And the thing that I do like is I think that he's a very smart player. I love his ball skills. I love how he attacks the ball. He always is playing through the catch point. Now, when you brought up him struggling against tight ends, yes, that is largely because of how small he is. He is built like a slot corner. Turns to being five nine. One yeah, that's seven. all I was surprised when I was looking more but into him. He that plays he wasn't outside. Playing more in the slot. Yeah, yeah, but think about this: like the same way we thought Cam Sutton, we were like, man, Cam Sutton is really a slot, but we play him on the outside. I think that this guy is a better version of that. I think he's just, I, I think that his ball skills and his footwork, and I think he's just a little bit quicker than Cam. But I, I, I know Cam is a crazy smart player, so I'm not saying that Darius is going to be a smarter version. I just think that he's a little bit more athletic, and he just has more experience you know, kind of playing out there in a sense. But I can understand why they would, they would say him to us. I think that he's fundamentally sound also. And that's one of the things that really allows him to have success on the outside. I mean, even sometimes when he's matching up, I think it was a couple of clips I saw him match up against uh, DeAndre Hopkins. And it's like, man, obviously DeAndre is a monster, but he understood how to play through his hands. He understood, you know, just his leverage and being patient. He played He played a little bit more off coverage as well opposite of Jalen Ramsey he was always pressed up playing man watching uh Darius Williams kind of reminded me of when we were watching um and we'll talk about this guy in a, in a little bit when we we're watching Cincinnati tape and it's like you got Sauce Gardner on one side and Kobe Brown on the other Sauce is pressed up 90 percent of the time hands on a guy whereas Kobe is a little bit more off coverage relying on his quickness and just savvy you know just mentally being a smart defender and just having really good ball skills when I watch Darius, I kind of would feel like that at times. But Darius is a tough dude. I mean, he he reads, plays well. I, I've seen him jump in front of him. It was a screen pass that Russell Wilson was throwing. He beats the defender, catches the ball, outruns DK Metcalf for the touchdown. Like, it, it, he he brings productivity. He brings toughness. He's a willing tackler as well. He's not a guy that's going to shy away from anything. But I also just like the fact that he's coming off of a Super Bowl. Because as a guy who was on a team that went to the AFC Championship, that mentality is it's a certain mentality you got to have when that's you're a really going, good point actually you know when, when you're going through and winning those type of games and getting in bigger moments in the postseason you got to have a certain type of confidence you got to have a certain type of just work ethic associated with you 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 don't have a lot of time for mental errors or you know questions about your effort you need to be a super consistent player and when you think of Darius to me that's what he brings so granted I don't look at him as an elite high-end talent but he is a very consistent, just overall good player that I think you win with. And price tag wise, he's going to be a lot cheaper than those other guys that we've been looking at. Now, if you bring in Darius, I still feel like I would probably want to draft another guy potentially just yeah, because yeah, yeah. we still 
we don't feel like he's the guy that you just put on your number one receiver and say, hey, we don't have to worry about it anymore. I still feel like he was going to need to – we'll be we're more confident than when we got Akello. But obviously, the, Akello developed and he showed that, hey, man, this guy's actually good and we think he could be something even better. I think with Darius, we would feel a lot more comfortable initially, but I think that we would still want to see him prove a little bit more to us that he could match up consistently against – you know, just top flight receivers on a week in and week out basis. Yeah. All that Super Bowl talk yeah. that you brought up, I really like. I mean, mm-hmm. you brought up like the on field stuff about yeah. having a certain mentality, not making mm-hmm. mental errors, be focused, knowing what it takes yeah. to win. But also, I would add the locker room stuff. I mean, no, we were talking about do. bringing in a veteran receiver man. on offense. Mm-hmm. We could use that on defense too. Yeah, because I mean, we have Cam Hayward, but having another voice in there doesn't hurt, especially a dude that just won a Super Bowl who knows what it takes. Who had all those dudes out there with the Rams, Mm -hmm. like studs, Jalen Ramsey, Vaughn Miller, obviously Stafford, Cooper Cup. Like, he was around all that. If he could bring some of that over to here some way, that would help. Like, honestly, you see how they practice, you see how they conduct themselves in meetings. And that's one of the biggest things that I will always say that I, I was so fortunate to have in Pittsburgh, man. Being able to come here and you see Troy, Ike Taylor, Lawrence Timmons, James Harrison, you know, you you see Brett Keys on how he will prepare defensively. And you're just like, this is different. Because in Buffalo, we weren't preparing like that. Buffalo was like, all right, we watch our tape. You know, we break down a couple of plays here and there. And after that, man, we out of there. We're not trying to spend a whole bunch of time, you know, at the facility and stuff like that. But you get to Pittsburgh and it's like, nah, we're not in a hurry to leave. We don't, they, this is their, the slogan that we would see in Pittsburgh. We're not clock punchers. Because the Buffalo was like, man, all right, we come in at 8 a.m. and we leave at 3.30 p.m. That's what it got to be every single day. Pittsburgh, we're like, no, nah, we don't we don't punch that clock. You know, so if you got to come here at 6 a.m. and we got to stay till 6 p.m. to get it right, we're going to do that. And it was plenty of times where that would happen. You're just like, bro, this is nuts. But because everybody was so committed to it, when you're out there on that field with these dudes, man, it just hits different. Because now we're, we know how each other is thinking. We know we're not playing football on a rudimentary level. We're playing it on a doctor level. You know what I mean? In terms of just seeing it and not just anticipating like, oh, man, what's my job? What, do I got to go to the big app? I don't care about I already know my job. I know what my guy next to me's job and the guy to the left of me's job. Now we're anticipating. Now we're saying, hey, what's the formation, bro? Oh, okay. You got two by two. All right, man. Lurk, lurk, lurk some crosses. Oh, you got stacked. Okay, man. Oh, oh, they condensed on the backside. Oh, he bursting over here. Oh, it's three by one. Bro, he can only run an inside break and run. We know these things. When I look at Darius at times on tape, I feel similar ways when I watch how he jumps certain routes. I'm like, you're not doing that if you're not studying film to that extent. You're not doing that if you're not reading, you know, that information that's across from you. And when you start doing that, that's how you get guys that take that next step. That's how you get guys that may be undersized but are able to play bigger than what they truly are, play in positions that you truly wouldn't associate them with. That's what I think of when I think of Darius, man. Yeah, like we talked with Flores. Yeah. Worst That's case, me, this raises the standard a little bit, maybe mm-hmm. shakes things up. He yeah. brings in new ideas, being under McVay, mm-hmm. the Super Bowl system that they were in. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't be opposed to it at all. It's just I don't want to be paying like that much money. But – this yep. is the type of signing that maybe goes underrated, goes unnoticed, mm-hmm. but helps a team build for the Super Bowl. Yeah, without a doubt, man. Without a doubt. Yeah, oh. I think that's uh, like I said. I don't the easy the, way. I don't hate it. I just oh, understand like why. I said I don't hate it. I just understand why he could potentially be a guy that. Oh we yeah, would, for sure. That we would end yeah, up I'm with not against if it. the other guys are gone. Yeah. Yeah. I think the easy thing for this article would have been Stephon Gilmore, J.C. Jackson to the Steelers. I mean, they just could have talked about Flores the whole time. Yeah. In terms of like free agency matchmaking. Mm-hmm. But you also got to remember, just, man. Just with, do with, that. But what the Steelers pay what those guys are going to be looking for. And that's the part where we just, even though we got a ton of cap space, I don't know if we're going to be willing to break the bank on those guys like that, man. Even though I think we should, I just don't think that they will all the way. Yeah. Juju to the Jaguars. I did notice that, man. That I don't hate that for Juju. I mean, I like it for him. Honestly, you still Not, got nah. you, you got the quarterback They're gonna down lose there. Shark. Yeah, absolutely. You're gonna get an opportunity, man. The weather is good, so you know you really can't complain. And it's a lot less pressure on you playing in Jacksonville than it will be in Pittsburgh. You could do anything you want, TikTok, anything. You know, no one's gonna complain. Yeah, they would love that because it would bring yeah. publicity to the absolutely, Jaguars. Absolutely, man. So trust me, like it's just a totally different vibe. I tell you, they they got a pool down there. That's how they get the people. Hey, get in the pool, baby. 
we suck on the field, but get in that pool. The pool looks good. It's like, oh, all right, cool. 